Until now, we've been using pgAdmin to create new entries in our database by just going into the little GUI here and then just adding new values. However, when you're actually working with the Postgres database, you're never actually going to do this. This is more for administrative purposes, but a real application is going to use SQL. Just like we use SQL for making queries, we're going to use SQL for adding new entries. So let's take a look at what the command looks like for adding a brand new entry into our database. The command starts with an insert because we're going to insert a brand new row. And then we say into, and then we're going to specify the table that we want to add a new entry to. Now in our database, we only have one table, so it's going to be products, but here you would provide whatever table you'd like to add a new entry into. Right, then we have to do, uh, what we have to do is provide a list of columns that we want to provide data for. Uh, and so I'm going to leave this blank for now. We're going to come back to that. And then we specify values. And then here we're going to actually provide the values for each column. And so if we take a look at our products database, uh, we know that the name is required. We know the price is required. Uh, and then that's about it. All right. We can choose to provide an is sale, but it's going to default to false. And then we can choose to provide an inventory if we want to. If we don't, though, it's going to default to zero. So we have to provide a name and a price. And it's ultimately up to us to decide what we want to pass in. So we know we need a name. And we know we need a price. Now, let's say we're going to let Postgres uh, automatically give us the default is sale value to be false. So we're going to leave that out because we're not going to pass in any data. So this column is just for all of the columns we want to pass in data. But let's say we want to give it a custom inventory value instead of just defaulting to zero. Here we would provide inventory. And then in the values column, these are going to be the values that you want to actually provide for the name, the price, and the inventory. So let's go ahead and provide that. So let's create a brand new item. So let's give it a name. Uh, and the order in which you pass things has to match up with the order that we pass in here. So the first column that we're going to provide a value for is name because it's the first one here. So what name should we give it? And keep in mind, since it's text uh, or varying character, we're going to have to put this in quotations. And let's add in a tortilla. So now we're a grocery store. All right. And then the next one is going to be the price. So how much is our tortilla going to cost? Uh, we'll say it's $4. And then finally, we have to provide an inventory value. So let's say we're going to have 1,000 tortillas. And then as usual, you want a semicolon. All right, and so at this point, this is all we have to do to create a brand new entry. So let's hit run and let's see what happens. So query returns successfully. Uh, and so we see this insert zero one. And so at this point it says insert zero one and then query returns successfully. So did we actually successfully insert that, something into our database? And more importantly, what exactly does this mean? So if you see insert zero one, that means everything worked perfectly. There was no errors. What this means is that first of all, ignore the zero. So this means uh, that we're using the default Postgres configuration. So this represents the OID, but I believe Postgres by default doesn't use that unless you specify it to. So it's going to give a value of zero. And don't worry too much about that. That's kind of outside of the scope of this course. We're not going to mess with that. But instead, what we want to focus on is that second column. So this means that we inserted one row. So that means our insert worked perfectly. So let's take this. And what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to copy this. Cut it out, actually paste it into my scratch pad for now. And then we're going to say select star from rows. Sorry, select star from products. And we're going to run that. And so if we go to our bottom, we should see our brand new tortilla. And so we provided the tortilla value. We provided the price. And we did not provide an is sale. So it defaulted to false. And then we provided an inventory. Now, if I copy this again and paste it back into here, right? And if I move the name, column right after the price. Well, now SQL is expecting me to provide the value for price first, then name, then inventory. So then I would have to take the price, move that over to the first column, and then move that, move that into the first entry. And then we have the name and then the inventory. And so keep in mind, the order here has to match the order here. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and just add this again, because why not? Uh, and so now, oops, it looks like we have an error. What happened here? All right, there we go. I guess we just needed that space. And so now it's in there. And you'll notice that once again, we get the zero one. So that means everything was inserted properly. So now we should have two items in our database with the name of tortillas. And when you're working with, with Postgres, uh, and especially with a, an API where we want to create a new post, like in our application, the general convention in an API is once we create the new post, we want to return that data back to 
whoever sent that request to the API. So we want to get that brand new, brand newly created post with the new fields like the created ad field and all the default values and send it back to the client or the front end. So how do we get Postgres to automatically return it? Because right now it doesn't seem to do that. And we could, you know, just provide two statements, right? I can add in a second statement that says select star, you know, from products. Uh, this is going to dump everything. We could potentially, you know, filter on, you know, where name equals, you know, tortilla or something like that. And then at that point, we should have three entries, but uh, that's one way of getting back the result. However, there's a much easier way within Postgres. So first of all, I'm going to change the name. I'm going to add a new item and say this is a car, and I'm going to give it a price of 10000 And what we can do is we can pass in a keyword called returning. So this is going to return the newly created item or items if you want to insert more than one item. And then here we have to specify the columns that we want for the newly returned items. So if I do star, that's going to return every single column. If I do ID, this is just going to give me the ID of the brand new, brand new created uh, item. I'm going to return every single column. So if I try this now, look at that. So it creates the new entry. We can see that has an ID of 26 and it gives back the entire row. Now, if you want to insert more than one row at a time, what we can do is we just do a comma here after values and then just provide the data for the next row. So we'll do, um, we'll create a new item that had cost $50. And this is going to be a laptop. And then we'll say there's going to be an inventory of 25 of them. And then if we wanted to add another one, then we could just do another comma and then add some more values in. So we'll give this a price of 60. This is going to be a monitor. And then we'll say we have four of those. And so here we can then go ahead and hit run. You can see that it added three items and then it returned all three because we have the returning keyword. And if you wanted to, we could just say, I want the ID. We could just say, I want the ID and the created at field. Maybe the name as well. If I run this, we can see it created another three new items and then it returned just those three fields. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover when it comes to creating new entries in a database and inserting new rows into a table.